Yeah, David, it's very nice to meet you. And I'm a systems biologist. And in fact, actually, I'm a theoretic systems biologist or work with mathematical models. And basically, we try to understand how cells behave, how they mm. process signals, and how we can extract some fundamental understanding of life in this way. But um, for you, as a clinician, so what would you like from, <clears throat> from systems biology from us? How can we make this relevant for medicine? I think that's a really good question. Medicine, obviously, I'm interested in explaining things as well. <clears throat> but we've got a problem of data and quality. Right. I guess what we're really wanting to make systems biology truly become systems medicine is we've got to identify big clinical problems that actually can be addressed in this way. And this way, I mean integration, multi-scale data sets, and actually, yes, predictive modeling, absolutely. But first and foremost, to address real clinical problems where we think there can be an answer. All right, so what you're proposing then is a, that we start with the clinical questions or look from our perspective as systems biologists where the things could be relevant and start then talking to clinicians, yeah. talking to doctors to find these sort of areas of overlap. So yeah, I, I think that's right. A lot of people that start talking about systems medicine came clinician or scientist or theoretician from a kind of systems biology background. So they wanted to take something that exists and can we apply this to medicine? To be really effective, I think what we have to have is enough clinicians being able to have the conversation with enough systems biologists right. to actually invent something different. It isn't just medicine rather than biology mm -hmm. with systems in front of it. It really is about saying, what are the questions that this kind of integrative approach can address? Yeah. So maybe that's a good way because the, the challenge, as you pointed out, then would be to get people interested, mm. to get clinicians mm. interested in what we are doing and the other way around. And the probably best way of doing that is really by identifying mm. the question so you can work. I think that's right, way. yeah. And, and the problem, the other problem from a clinical perspective is people say, well, show me the successes of systems medicine or systems biology. And actually there are successes in terms of drug development, particularly in cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. But if you look across the piece, it's very difficult to, to put hand and heart and say, here are the big success stories. Right. And partly that may be because we've actually tried to take systems biology to explain, you know, explain cancer. But actually cancer changes, it evolves, it's heterogeneous. How could we, why would we want to explain it? Actually yeah. what we want to do is kind of make something work. So there's probably a conceptual gap, which I think is closing, but there's probably been a conceptual gap between the, the kind of the biologist and the theoretician and the medic, where actually the more we talk, the more there's interaction, I think we're going to identify problems that are tractable. Mm -hmm. That actually resonates with me and that will probably resonate with a lot of modeling people from a theoretical mm -hmm. background. Because for us, the way we were trained, we came up, we always said, okay, we want a model to explain things, yeah. but a model is never perfect. And for us, the use of a model is the important thing. So a model <clears throat> must be somehow useful. There must be a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to achieve yeah. that, we need to purposefully construct it from the beginning. I think that's right. Another big issue is a huge amount of discussion about data standardization, data quality. Clearly important. Mm -hmm. Actually, the problem is in real life, you don't always get all the data. Data isn't always good quality. So there's this tension between data that's useful and data that's incomplete. And that's something which, from a systems biology background, is often difficult to accept because there you design the experiment, you do the experiment again. With patients, you've got one chance. So I think to get models that can be used but are robust enough to actually allow for uncertainty or incompleteness, that's Great, I think that's a brilliant theoretical challenge. Yes, and there's probably a lot of data out there already if you think about projects like the Cancer mm -hmm. Genome Atlas that can be, be mined. But the trouble is, it's, it's static data, yeah. so it's great and that's good quality data, but how useful is that to an individual who says, what's going to happen to me in six months? What's going to happen to me in one year? What's going to happen to me in three years? 
So there's this gap between huge data, which is great, but actually integrating that data in a form that you can then take to an individual. Yeah, that's a good point. So, because there's a lot of talk about personalized medicine, mm. let's say, you know, precision medicine. And the challenge will probably be how, 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 how we can achieve that to go all the way from a lab where we study cell, cell lines or cells behave in cell culture, maybe animals, mm. to make that relevant for the patient.